Climate change is one of the most pressing challenges of mankind. It causes glaciers to melt, but not only that. Moreover, there is strong evidence that climate change is increasing the frequency and intensity of extreme weather events right across the globe, compromising our food and water security, risking our economic and social well-being, and undermining our ecosystems on which we depend. We are increasingly seeing the consequences of climate change. Stronger rainstorms leads in turn to flooding problems, hotter temperatures lead to more heat stress. In Germany, the glaciers will have melted away by 2040. In Munich, 2018 was the hottest year on record. Due to climate change in the Bavarian Alps, summer precipitations during storms may have increased by 25%, critically inducing flood risks. In June 2013, the floods in Bavaria, caused by extreme rainfall, caused 6 million euros in damages and killed 8 people. In recent years, we have seen uh, a change in the weather patterns with more extreme precipitation over shorter periods of time. Floods are occurring more frequently and there will be a greater need for flood protection measures in the future. How do we adapt to such rapid environmental changes? In many parts of the world, the dominant approach to deal with climate change tends to be static engineered intervention, known as grey infrastructure. They are very expensive, and are effective only locally and in the short term. Of course these are fantastic, these technical approaches, but they all are what we call monofunctional. They just serve one single purpose. We need to see that these create negative side effects and that is not sustainable in the long run. So it costs a lot of money, but we can't do anything else with it. Grey solutions often are barriers along the river. They may just transfer or even increase the problem downstream. The biggest challenge that we have in managing floods is moving from response to moving to preventing. The European community is mobilizing in the fight against climate change with a powerful ally, nature. Nature plays a critical role helping nations and communities to adapt to the changing climate and can provide a more affordable long-term solution. Nature-based solutions, approaches and measures that we take as a society to use and respect the values this nature has and the benefits it can bring us to solve some of the most pressing challenges that we are facing. Nature-based solutions are basically actions that provide protection and restoring ecosystems. Nature-based solutions are more than just blue-green infrastructure. They also include management practices, as well as the responsible use of our land and water and natural resources. Nature-based solutions are multifunctional measures taken for implemented for tackling threats deriving from climate change. In contrast with grey solutions, such as the measures, the concrete-based measures, NBS aim at improving and promoting natural ecosystem services, introducing, providing social and economic benefits. NBS are also uh, technically viable and also cost-effective. The European Union is positioning itself as a leader in NBS implementation, supported through research and action grants. Physicus means according to nature in Greek. It's an innovation action that is funded by the EU. In the Physicus project, we're 15 European partners and we are working together to create innovation. We're not only doing research, but we're also required to actually implement the nature-based solutions. So we have five large case study sites. The Pyrenees around the cross-border between France and Spain. This mountainous territory is uh, the place of several hazards, such as landslides, rockfall, avalanches, and torrential flow. All these hazards will be addressed within the physical project. Massachusetts Lake in the Lucca province in Italy. The main challenge is the water quality increment and also the soil erosion reduction. And there is a big challenge about the flood risk reduction. The Valley of Gudbjørnsdalen in Oppland County, Norway. This valley has a long history of floods and a large part of the population is exposed to flood risk. River restoration is becoming popular as MBS to improve the ecological status, recreational potential and flood protection. A number of projects have already been implemented, providing some examples of good practice. The Isar restoration in Munich is one of these.
The ESA River is a showcase of our participative uh, process can leverage the implementations of nature-based solutions. People from all around the world come to see it. In 2019, experts from eight European countries came to the River ESA to learn and benefit from local knowledge about river restoration. You have to uh, learn from others' success and also from others' failures. The so ESA case has been a big learning experience because then we have seen how this process has been taking time and how it's founded and anchored among the different stakeholder groups. Respecting the river and its floods, city planners historically kept a safe distance between housing areas and the floodplain. In the late 1800s, the regulation of the river Isa allowed the population to settle the space that had until then belonged to the river. And since then, the River Isar gradually lost its natural character that can today only be found at a few places in the Upper Isar Valley or at the Puplinger Aue or at the Flauche. Further modifications of the Isar were conducted by the City Council to provide water for industry and hydroelectric power plants. The situation of the river was very poor and citizens increasingly expressed their dissatisfaction with the situation of the River Isar. The Silvenstein Reservoir, built between 1954 and 1959, was intended to re-establish a minimal quantity of water flowing in the Isar riverbed and to mitigate flood risk. However, the reservoir controls only 5% of the catchment area. Furthermore, Reservoir sedimentation caused a decrease in reservoir capacity. Soil erosion from mountain slopes is a problem because we lose soil and this material may end up in reservoir lakes, reducing the volume available. Moreover, the reservoir did not solve the missing recreational potential of the river area for citizens. From 1970 onwards, the civil society started to become active and demand the restoration of the River Isar. Additional laws and regulations from the EU, such as the Bathing Water Directive, the Habitats Directive and the Water Framework Directive, leverage the restoration trend. We do have very important instruments at three different scales. First we have the government, then we have the market actors, and then we have civil society. First, the government can do a lot for preventing flood losses, mainly by keeping capital and people out of flood areas. It has the instruments, but the government can't do it alone. What we also need is we need the market actors to be a part of this. And one major institution that we have is insurance. But we find actually that insurers aren't using those instruments as much as they actually could. And finally, I think it's very, very important to understand the role of civil society. At the River Isar in Munich in 1987, the City Council decided for a comprehensive participation of the citizens in the development of a mission statement for the Isar plan and asked to organize a participatory process and public involvement to find new, innovative, more natural solutions to give new life to the River Isa instead of using technical solutions. Starting with a consultative process, the Isa plan process evolved to a more and more complex one, involving different stakeholders from various sectors, ideas and visions of what the Isa should look like were developed. This included also experimentation of the suggested solutions. This creative approach to finding solutions together was defined as the so-called living labs a decade later. So what are living labs? Living labs are um, a concept to bring together stakeholders of different groups to co-design and develop new ideas. The advantage of a living lab is to bring together people and you can reach a broad acceptance and a feeling of ownership. The limitation of living labs is that it often is time consuming, especially if differing opinions and uh, perspectives, and it takes time and a lot of trust to find a compromise solution. The detailed planning was carried out in a differentiated participatory way and landscapers, together with hydrologists, captured both the citizens and administration requirements thereby designing a new face to the River Isar, made by man, but inspired by nature. 
with the construction of the restored River Isar in Munich from 2000 to 2011, the long-term planning process was put into reality. Citizens were gradually able to see the advantages of nature-based solutions. For the inner city section near the Deutsches Museum, because of the more urban character of the river, intense discussions after the landscape competition caused a slight delay in project implementation. Round tables with the protagonists, workshops and mediation led to a compromise. While engineers had previously designed an honest design of the area, showing the flood protection infrastructure, public opinion was integrated into the plan. And finally, a romantic natural design was implemented. Participatory processes in both planning, implementation and evaluation of measures are a premise for good solutions. We hope that by involving relevant stakeholders, we will be able to come up with unified solutions that we can all live well with. Learning from the Isa River restoration, five success factors can be identified. A broad participation of civil society, open-mindedness of the administration, multi-scale and multidisciplinary round tables, neutral mediation help to overcome conflicts, trust and confidence between the stakeholders. The ESA plan was a forerunner and thus represents a practical illustration of how nature-based solutions can be implemented using the creativity of engaged citizens and stakeholders. It is a showcase of socio-ecological resilience based on the river culture concept, namely, if the people care, they will take care. Many lessons can be learned from the ESA plan planning and implementation, but further efforts should be undertaken to achieve long-term resilience. We have a lot of issues remaining, like flood protections, which have to be more ecological, and less conflict between recreational users and natural conservation. All around the world, we have to face and solve the same challenges. In Bavaria, at the River Inn, and at the Danube. In Italy, at the River Sergio, in France, in Spain, in Norway, all over Europe, and indeed everywhere in the world. It's important that the number of research and demonstration projects like Physicals is increasing. And that means that um, funding agencies such as the EU and national research councils focus on nature-based solutions in their climate adaptation strategies. Secondly, networking is important that uh, these different projects exchange experiences and competence. And thirdly, national, regional, local authorities have to trust that these solutions work and uh, be willing to implement them also at, uh, at a relatively large scale. Respect the river. It is your opportunity for climate change adaptation.